This is the first lesson in the uh, measurement unit, and this lesson is an introduction to measurement. To start this unit, we're going to learn about the Pythagorean theorem, or review the Pythagorean theorem if you've seen it before, perhaps in elementary school. So let's begin. A right triangle is a triangle that contains one right angle, so that's an angle at 90 degrees. The longest side of the triangle is called the hypotenuse and is directly opposite to the right angle. So this right here, this long side, is called the hypotenuse. The other two shorter sides are called the legs. So this would be considered a leg and this would be considered a leg. In a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now that might sound uh, a bit confusing, so let's translate that into math. The square of the hypotenuse length, right, so C, that's the hypotenuse length, the square of it, so C squared, is equal to the sum, okay, sum means addition, so what are we adding? The squares of the other two sides. So we are taking the squares of the other two sides and we are adding them. So this is Pythagorean theorem as listed in the sentence, but in general you often see it as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. All right, so these are your two, the sum of the two shorter sides added together. I mean, that's your, um, uh, that's your hypotenuse squared, okay? Uh, the sum of the squares of the two sides is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this now. Find the length of the unknown side in each triangle and round each answer to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I'm gonna look at example 1a, and I'm gonna start by writing out Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now I can see that in this example, the hypotenuse, which is traditionally represented by the letter c, is now represented by the letter x. So I'm gonna change that to x squared. One side is 9.3 centimeters, so I'm going to write 9.3 squared, and the other side here is 12.1 centimeters, so I write 12.1 squared. Evaluating these numbers on my calculator, 9.3 squared is equal to 86.49. 12.1 squared is 146.41. And that's equal to x squared. So I add these two numbers up and I get 232.9 is equal to x squared. And now I have to evaluate what x is. So to get rid of a square, I will square root both sides. Okay? So I'm gonna square root this side and square root the other side because remember that in an equation, what is done to one side must be done to the other side as well. So effectively what this does is a square and a square root cancel and I am left with x, and the square root of 232.9 is approximately equal to 15.3. And I use a little dot on top of the equal sign to indicate that it is approximate. So I'll finish up with a therefore statement, and in my therefore statement, I'm going to include my units. Therefore, the length of the hypotenuse is 15.3 
centimeters. And what I might say is I might say not the length of the hypotenuse is 15.3 centimeters because that would be saying that it's exactly 15.3 centimeters. I'm going to say it is approximately 15.3 centimeters. Okay, so as we can see, we took uh, Pythagorean theorem. We looked at the shape and plugged in the values into Pythagorean theorem. And then we evaluated for the missing value. Looking at um, example 1b. This one looks a little tricky um, because if we go to write um, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is the general form of Pythagorean theorem. You might be tempted to think that because this in the diagram is labeled c, that this is in fact c squared. But that's not the case. Remember, this is just the general, most well-known form of Pythagorean theorem. The C is always the hypotenuse in uh, Pythagorean theorem. And in this case, the hypotenuse in, the, in this example is actually 41.9 meters. So this was done intentionally as an example so that you should think through exactly what you're doing and not just simply uh, plug things in where you think they go, right? So this one is the hypotenuse, 41.9. So that's got to go right there. So 41.9 squared is equal to 25.2 squared plus c squared. So I need to isolate c squared. And before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, to get c squared by itself, I'm going to subtract 25.2 squared from both sides, right? So uh, 25.2 squared plus c squared minus 25.2 squared is equal to 41.9 squared minus 25.2 squared. So this will allow me to get c squared by itself and then I can evaluate 41.9 squared and 25.2 squared so that's 1755.61 minus 1239.04 I perform that calculation and I get 516.57 in order to get c by itself, because right now we have c squared, I take the square root of both sides. Okay. And I can show you how this is done in your calculator. I myself am using a Texas instrument. So if I have c is equal to the square root of 516.57, what I will do here is I will do uh, we have a square root button which is right there. You can see that, but it's a second function. So I go second to get this uh, square root. And as you can see, I've now got my square root there. And I do 516.57. Okay, I can close that bracket and press enter. And I get 22.728, but it only asked for one decimal place. So C is equal to 22.7. In this case, it is meters, right? So therefore, the length of the missing side is approximately 22.7 meters. Now, you may have caught me because, look, I didn't put the uh, little dot above the equal sign there to note that that was an approximation. But now I'm going back and I'm making sure that I wrote that. Great. Turn the page. In the measurement unit, there's a lot of formulas that we are going to use. And when we use these formulas, we often have to try and rearrange them. Right? So this is no different than what you've done um, with equations in the past. Um, all you are trying to do now is you are trying to get the um, variables by themselves. There's no... Um, Generally, uh, we're not uh, dealing with 
a bunch of numbers. We're going to be moving around a bunch of uh, like letters or variables. Okay, so we're going to rearrange these equations to isolate for the variable that it's asking for. So let's take a look here. Um, example 1a. A is equal to L times W, and we need to get W by itself. But the fact of the matter is that W is right now being multiplied by L. So in order to get W by itself, I will have to divide both sides by L so that they cancel. And this is no different than what we've done in the past with numbers instead of variables. So then when L and L cancel here, I will be left with W by itself, and then I have A over L. And what I can say there is, um, therefore, W is equal to A over L. All right. Let's take a look at this one. I need to get r by itself, but r is being multiplied by both 2 and pi. So how will I get rid of both the 2 and the pi so that I will only have r on this side? Why don't you go ahead, copy it out, and see, uh, press pause and see if you can come up with an idea um, as to what you could do to get r by itself. It's very similar to this example. Okay, go ahead and press pause. Okay, so you may have thought, well, if I need to get r by itself, but it's being multiplied by 2 and pi, then I need to divide by 2 and pi on this side so that they cancel. But what I do to this side, I must do to the other side because it's an equation and it needs to stay equal. So those two cancel and I get c over 2 pi is equal to r. And now I have isolated for r because r is by itself so therefore r is equal to c over 2 pi. Looking at example 1c this is going to involve an extra step because as we can see we have y is equal to mx plus b and I need to get m by itself. So what I need to do is I need to in order to get m by itself I first need to get rid of this plus b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract b from both sides is equal to mx plus b minus b. And what that does by subtracting b from both sides, I now end up with y minus b is equal to mx. I still do not have m by itself, so in order to get m by itself, I need to divide both sides by x. So we'll divide this side by x, and I will divide this side by x, and then that will cancel. So we will have y minus b over x is equal to m. Or, alternatively, you can also write it because x is the common denominator, y over x minus b over x is equal to m. Either of those two equations is correct, and we have effectively isolated for M. Looking at this one over here, we need to get L by itself. But in this, uh, similarly to the previous example, we have another term here. We have 2w. And so we have plus 2w. So I need to get rid of this 2w. I need to uh, bring it to the other side so I can start isolating L. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to think, what are you going to do to both sides of this equation to get rid of the 2w so you can start getting 2l by itself? Go ahead and press pause. Okay, so you may have guessed that you have to subtract 2w from both sides. So p minus 2w is equal to 2l plus 2w 
minus 2w. And what happens is the 2w's will cancel out on this side because 2w minus 2w equals 0. And you end up with p minus 2w is equal to 2l. And now we divide both sides by 2. This cancels and we end up with p minus 2w over 2 is equal to l. And I have, again, effectively uh, isolated L by getting it by itself. Next example here. I need to get B by itself. But what I can see here is that there is a denominator of 2 on this side. Um, so I need to get rid of that denominator. So... I'm going to rewrite this, and I want you to remember, or see if you can remember, how do we eliminate denominators in equations? Well, you may remember that you look for the lowest common denominator on uh, both sides, and if I look here, that's A is the same thing as saying A over 1, and I have B times h over 2. So the lowest common denominator between 1 and 2 is just 2. And then you multiply the entire equation by 2. So multiply 2 on this side and multiply 2 on that side. What ends up happening is this 2 and this 2 will cancel because you can think of it as 2 over 1. So these 2's will cancel. That 2 stays, so that's 2a is equal to b times h. You need to get b by itself, and it's being multiplied currently by h, so you need to divide both sides by h. Then you end up having 2 times a over h is equal to b. we have effectively isolated B. And again, the um, big idea behind that uh, solution was looking at the lowest common denominator between the two sides and multiplying the entire equation by the lowest common denominator of two. Okay, a couple of these more examples left. So this one over here, again, we have a denominator of two and no denominator here. So I want you to think and go back, look at the example that we've done previously. What are you going to do to both sides of that equation to get rid of your denominator? Go ahead and press pause. Okay, so maybe you've thought about it and you saw what we did here. You know, A is the same thing as saying A over 1, right? That's how you take A and make it a fraction. It's just A over 1. The denominator there is 2. So the lowest common denominator is 2. So I'm going to take 2 and multiply it on both sides. And then we have h, a plus b over 2, but then again multiplied by 2. And the 2 and the 2 will cancel. So on the left hand side I have... 2a is equal to h a plus b. Well, I still need to get b by itself, but it's inside these brackets, and these brackets, or this binomial, because that's two terms, is being multiplied by h. So I need to get rid of, start getting rid of this h. So because h is multiplying the bracket in which b is, we're going to divide both sides by h. And the h's there will cancel. So I have 2a over h is equal to a plus b. Again, I need to get b by itself. And right now I've got a positive a there. So how will I get rid of positive a? Well, I'm going to subtract both sides by a.
and that will get rid of a on that side because a minus a is equal to 0. So then I end up with 2a over h minus a is equal to b. And that's my final expression. Over here, I need to get um, v is equal to uh, 1 half pi r squared h, and I need to get h by itself. But uh, the first thing I have here is I do have this fraction here, 1 over 3 pi r squared h, and I have v. So 1 over 3 pi r squared h, well, that's the same thing as saying 1 over 3 times pi r squared h all over 1. And because uh, that's a fraction, 1 over 3, and then pi r squared h, well, if we write that as a fraction, that's pi r squared h over 1. When I multiply fractions, I multiply the numerator. So I multiply these two, and I multiply these two. So v is actually equal to pi r squared h over 3. So this equation written like this is the exact same equation as this. It's just expressed a little differently. In this case, we took the 1 over 3 and we multiplied it by pi r squared h to get this. But this is doing the exact same thing. It's just written a bit differently. However, now I see I have a denominator of 3 here that I need to get rid of. So just as the previous examples, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 to eliminate that denominator. And I get 3v is equal to pi r squared h. To get h by itself, I have to get rid of the pi r squared coefficient because pi r squared is multiplying h. So I divide both sides by pi r squared. That cancels, that cancels, and I get 3v over pi r squared is equal to h, and now I have h by itself. All right, final example over here. I need to get a by itself. Problem is, I have plus b squared on this side. So how will I get rid of this plus b squared so that I can get a squared all by itself on that side? You may have thought, well, if this is plus b squared, if I take away b squared from both sides, what will happen? a squared plus b squared minus b squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And then, as you can see here, positive b squared minus b squared, well, that should just be equal to 0. So those two cancel. And I get a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. But if I have to get rid of this square, well, remember that to get rid of a square, we square root both sides entirely. So I square root this side, and I square root the entirety of that side, not just one of these, the entire side has to be put under a square root. This square root and that square cancel. So a is equal to the square root entirely of c squared minus b squared. So what we have seen on this page is just a bunch of exercises whereby we are isolating for the variable that is being asked for. And to do that, we perform operations on both sides of the equations in order to isolate for the variable being asked for. Sometimes it's a matter of just dividing, or sometimes it's just a matter of multiplying. In other cases, you may have to add or subtract terms on both sides to start getting 
the variable alone. The homework is listed at the bottom of the page. Thanks for watching.